Welcome to the gallery, Karen. Thank you. All right, well, we've been looking at the exhibition, we're looking at Alta Dunkley's work. Mm -hmm. um, I think what most of us want to know is to what extent do you think you can get to know Dunkley's psychology through his paintings and sculptures? Okay, I think there's some things that you can access through the work. There's a thin line, however, between what we imagine that an artist is doing or portraying. We can access some of his behaviors and consistent behaviors within the work. Um, a lot of it, too, is what we project onto the painting. Mm -hmm. So for Dunkley in particular, where, in my view, he used relatively muted tones, yes. the, you know, the dreamscape, I would say that, to a large extent, his work is like a Rorschach blob. If you know what a Rorschach blob is, it's that strange ink blot on the paper and you hold it up to the person and they see a cat and they see their mother and father fighting mm -hmm. and they see the hospital they were born in, yes. but it's really just a blob. Mm -hmm. But those are what we call projective measures. So I think art acts as that mirror, that when we hold it up and we look at it, we start to talk about ourselves. So his work itself, you'd say, is really rich in terms of what it can bring that as the viewer's interpretation. Certainly as a viewer's interpretation. Then there is what the artist has done mm -hmm. consistently because I wouldn't look at one piece of Dunkley's work and say, ah, this is Dunkley. He's this kind of fellow or that kind of fellow. But when you look at his works as a collection, even if you look at four or five of his paintings, one of the things that struck me first, and, and I, saw Dunkley's work many years ago, mm -hmm. but seeing it, so many of them displayed together was really wonderful. What struck me first was his control. Oh. It's an extremely controlled effort at depicting nature, mm -hmm. which is an extremely exuberant subject. So there's a contradiction in his work. Nature is untamable <laughs> and unknowable, and Dunkley tames nature within the frame. What does, that, what does that say about Dunkley, though, in terms of his need to team? Well, this is, I, I, I certainly see in Dunkley's work a kind of um, obsessive compulsive behavior. Mm -hmm. His repetition of the same plant mm -hmm. over and over and over again, even though the plant is fictional. There is no such plant that I know of in nature. I mean, I even went around after I came here the first time to look. And I have a cactus, a great cactus that tends to put out little buds on top of buds on top of buds. And it reminds me of Dunkley. And when I looked at the plant to see if that's what he was depicting, there's no such plant. This rounded plant that forms a circle, but it's a very controlled circle. Mm. Dunkley's plants don't ever reach out into the pathway. Mm -hmm. They don't burst over the fence. They don't scatter leaves everywhere. The ground is clear wherever he's drawing. Well, I think I'm wondering if it has anything to do with his life experience because there is one story told mm. that uh, when he was in Panama, there was a time when he was lost in the jungle. Mm. So I'm wondering if that what was potentially a traumatic experience. Has Perhaps he's now trying to, to control it. Mm -hmm. it. I certainly just see a lot of control. The other mm. thing that puzzled me and when I asked the question it appeared not to have been asked before was whether or not he had any pigments because mm -hmm. Dunkley's work is devoid of color. Mm -hmm. It's not even sepia. It's not a wash of sepia. Mm -hmm. it is a, it's almost as if he sucked the color out of the canvas and he has one or two paintings mm -hmm. where color comes in. Um, I think Road to Falmouth might be the one with the seaside. Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Where you suddenly see blue and mm -hmm. you suddenly see movement in the water and you, you see that there's something going on here. People live here. Other than that, he has very, very little color. I wondered if he was colorblind. Mm. Because it, it seems odd to me that when you live in such a lush environment, mm -hmm that the greens aren't overpowering and the reds aren't overpowering and the hibiscus and the, and the plants that he's drawing are not the plants that you see in Jamaica. Ah, There's sure. no quintessential hibiscus or oleander or June rose or none of the plants that we know. Oh. So botanically, it's quite foreign. Well, and 
that actually lends to some of the animals as yes. well. Even though we do see our hummingbird in one, <laughs> but we do we, we yeah. see uh, the gerbil, uh, the yes. kangaroo, like you know, yes. and, and, and the squirrel, um, and the squirrels, and, yeah. and and these may be from past experiences he's had mm -hmm. overseas, but certainly the landscapes that he's drawing, although they're meant to be Jamaican, I imagine, certainly don't depict a Jamaican landscape. Not to me, not noticeably Jamaican. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, there is a question now, I mean, that I mm. particularly wanted mm. to ask you in terms of um, the potential psychosexual implications within his work. I mean, that's something that we've heard a little bit about mm. in some of the, the, the essays that have been written, but something that hasn't really fully been explored. Yeah. Is that something you think we can see in, the, in any of the works? Um, the only thing that struck me as somewhat sexual in his works I would say that I couldn't tell you anything about his sexuality from his works generally. Mm. Mm. I would say that his sexual life is hidden from mm. the canvas. I would say that it probably occupies a dark space for him mm -hmm. and not something that he's particularly keen to show anyone. Mm. Yes, so I wouldn't say that you can see it in his works. The few pieces that do speak to any kind of sexuality and they're not even lustful, mm -hmm. they're coquettish, are his women. Mm. The depiction of women, it's always a sideways stance. Perhaps mm. that's what he could depict best. Mm -hmm. But the woman is turned sideways. Uh, she's coquettish in that her skirt is pulled up. Mm -hmm. She has a rather rounded derriere and yes. a small waist. And mm. she's always looking a bit like, you know, sort of the, the playful seductress as opposed to the vampish, uh. womanly. Seductress. Even his nude mm -hmm. on the chaise lounge. The chaise lounge is better depicted than and it's yeah. a nude. Her mm -hmm. breasts are perfect, yeah, yes. but her other <laughs> visible parts are uh, sort of muted. It's kind of like the way a child would draw mm -hmm. a, a, a nude. So that wouldn't necessarily um, refer to some kind of anxiety or some kind of, say, I don't want to use that. I don't necessarily think modesty, but you know, kind of. You know, you know, the separation yeah. of self from actually, from actually detailing that. All right, so I would more say a separation and privacy. Mm -hmm. It's all of artistic expression is autobiographical. Mm -hmm. They say all writing is autobiographical. And it is, we put ourselves in our writing. The same thing for paintings. When someone studiously avoids a conversation, mm -hmm. this is a big conversation for them. So it's an absence of a lustful kind of environment. His environment is not lustful. Mm -hmm. It's not exuberant. It's not florid. It's not, uh, I'm going to use a word my mother used, invented, melagorgeous. Oh. It's not melagorgeous. It doesn't pull you in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seduce you. There's no tantalizing effort here. There's this very controlled thing going on. Because and that makes me wonder about his sex life. Well, I find that very interesting because much has been made, which is one of the reasons mm. why I wanted to ask you mm. about this, um, about the truncated um, forms in the work, you know, mm -hmm. the, a lot of tree trunks, a lot of, you know, chopped yes, off tree trunks a within a lot of, of these works. Trunks, yes. um, and so I'm wondering about the, the, the you know, potential phallicness yeah. of this, but the fact that all of them seem to be... They are all truncated <laughs> mm -hmm. and they all seem to be restricted tubes. Yes. I see tube, I don't see penis, I don't mm -hmm. see emblem of male prowess because uh, they don't seem to, even the one with uh, feeding the fishes, yes. where there's a trunk coming out from under the water, the woman is above in that typical donkey shoe with the open toe mm -hmm. and a little high heel. There isn't, a, again, a melagorgeous organ coming mm. out of there. The water is dripping out, but the organ is not particularly presentable, nor particularly turgid, nor particularly swollen, nor mm. particularly oozing. Mm. It's just water dripping out. Oh. So I don't get <laughs> potency. Okay. Wait. For me, that's more a sign of impotence than, than potency. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I was going to ask you, can you mention the shoe? Mm. Because there are, several, there, there are yes. several works where there seems to be a particular focus on the female shoe, a, a, a specific shoe, the open-toed shoe. It's a, a shoe that a flapper wears. It's a 1920s kind of canvas shoe mm -hmm. with a natural heel and the open toe. Mm -hmm. And actually what that brings to mind for me is mother. 
Oh, because I was thinking that it might yeah. have been some kind of foot fetish or something of the sort. I would think that if he had a foot fetish, he'd become particularly good at depicting feet. Mm -hmm. And we might have seen a woman barefooted. Mm -hmm. That would be sensuous. Mm -hmm. We might have seen a woman, for instance, a one rode to church, mm -hmm. where he yes. has this lovely woman sitting almost side saddle again mm -hmm. on the wall, and she's dangling her shoe, and she has on this lovely hat. We don't get her dangling her feet in wet grass. Uh. Dangling mm -hmm. her feet in wet grass would be much more sexual and much more suggestive of freedom. Sex is freeing, not restricting. Sex mm -hmm. takes away the inhibitions. Mm -hmm. Sex is a place we go to be playful. Mm -hmm. Sex is not the place we go to be controlled unless we have certain obsessions about sex. For instance, BDSM. Yes. For bondage and domination and sadomasochism, we go to sex for control because we feel the rest of our lives are out of control. But in the generality of things, sex is a place we go for freedom. So I'd want to see a woman who's perhaps kicking off her shoe, uh, taking off her shoe, her shoes in her hand and her feet dangling in the, in the wet grass. That would be sexual. Hmm. I do wonder though, because it, it, including in the Road to Church mm -hmm. work and several of the other works, we have um, these particular animals yes. coming back again. We have yes. the crab coming yes, back multiple times, mm -hmm. and the spider and the spider's web. Yes. Would that have any kind of? Could that be a, 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 a you know a, with a subconscious or well, conscious symbol? <laughs> the thing is, I'm wondering when I see the spider because I did notice the spiders even from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and the crab is an animal that looks at you and walks sideways. Mm -hmm. So you can't trust the crab. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're looking at you, but they're walking that mm -hmm. way. The spider. I wondered where Dunkley places himself in the painting. Mm -hmm. I wondered if he was doing the kind of Hitchcock thing, where Hitchcock does a cameo uh, appearance in all of his movies, mm -hmm. and many other, Tarantino now does yes. it, many other great directors have begun to do it. So I asked myself that question, is Dunkley the spider? Or is he, is the, he the one weaving <laughs> the web? Is he the mm -hmm. crab? Is he, for instance, that beautiful uh, banana plantation mm -hmm. where the banana becomes the, the raison d'etre of the painting is a banana plantation, but the rabbit in the hutch in the hole that is womb-shaped yes. ends up with a banana in his hands. Mm -hmm. So banana in a big context and banana mm -hmm. in a small mm -hmm. context. I'm wondering, well, who is this rabbit in the hole? Hmm. Is this a flight of fancy where he says, I wonder if you just stripped away all the layers if you could see the, the rabbit, or does the rabbit represent something for him? I don't know, but it's quite a curious painting. Instead of it being a banana plantation, it becomes about a rabbit in a hole with a banana. Mm. And self-nurturing in a womb-like space. Because a rabbit hutch is not a womb-like space. Ah, no. Yes. No, so when not. rabbits borrow, they don't borrow mm -hmm. neatly and give you an egg-shaped, oval-shaped, womb-like space. So that was interesting to me. Uh, what, one thing that I often wonder, too, is the the fact that when you look at a lot of his works, they are not necessarily peopled. There you go. It's, it's like yeah. you, you, you yeah. have all these vistas, these roadways mm -hmm. um, leading off into we're not quite sure where. Yes. Um, I wonder about that, though, in terms of what, 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 what that could potentially mean. I mean, I think, yes. <laughs> it's like, I think it's really speaking about his life because he had a, ver a, a life filled with journeys and some of them Precisely. very difficult. But I'm wondering, you know, that's not my area of expertise. I'm interpreting it but from I the art historian. I would be tempted to, to interpret it in the same way as you. Mm -hmm. There's always a setting off on a journey. And he plays with perspective a lot. And now I'm going to have to say, and I'm trespassing now in the era of art. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always doing this perspective taking, this pathway, this, this journey, mm -hmm. as you see in all of the ones with a pathway. Um, interestingly, the one with the tennis player yes. is the most playful of mm -hmm. the pathways. And then we have the racehorse with the dog. Mm -hmm. I like that one, the racehorse with the dog yapping <laughs> at the fence and the dog looks like Spot, eh? Spot mm -hmm. the dog and the, the horse is, is pulling up on its hind legs because it's been startled by the dog. But that's the most motion you get in his paintings. And again, yeah. I refer to the lack of movement in the trees. There's no wind whistling through the trees. It's a very still pastoral environment. But 
to switch slightly to sort of more a more romantic look at, at, at his work, I'm curious about his painting of his um, golden anniversary. Mm. I'm very curious mm. about that because the depiction of Mrs. Dunkley is not flattering. Well, he has these beautiful women that he mm -hmm. depicts sitting side saddle on the wall, on stools, uh, nude on a chaise lounge. And mm. Mrs. Dunkley, uh, including the fact that she looks as masculine as he does in the painting. And I understand that it's not an attempt at realism. Mm -hmm. But given the, the treatment of the painting, the hands are weathered. The um, face is turned towards him. He's not turned towards her. Her ribbon is crushed against him, her eye is crushed against him because one eye is done mm -hmm. slightly out of focus and the other one is in. And she has a mole on her face mm -hmm. and dark areas where, you know, as you age, you're probably getting a kind of mustache shadow. Mm -hmm. It's not a flattering portrait. So I, that for me evokes curiosity because it's framed in a heart and you have another companion piece with the inverted heart in the garden, but it makes me wonder what is the role he has um, created for a Mrs. Dunkley. Could it it's be? not a romantic piece. It doesn't romanticize It doesn't her. romanticize, but does that mean it's not romantic in terms of what it's supposed to be depicted? Well, from a psychosexual point of view, mm -hmm. the term romantic is used to depict, to, to refer to relationships in which there's a sexual content. Mm -hmm. Without oh. sex, there's no romance mm -hmm. in a psychosexual view. Mm -hmm. So romance for sex therapists or sexologists, sex researchers, is not gestures. Okay. It's not the bunch of roses. It's not the chocolates. Mm -hmm. It's the, are we having a sexual relationship with a mm -hmm. mental, physical or otherwise, emotionally mm -hmm. sexual relationship. And that picture for me says duty. Mm -hmm. What's interesting to me as well, O'Neill, is that his sculptures, mm -hmm. for me, show more joy than mm -hmm. his paintings. In his sculptures, you get a little playfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, even the woman, the second woman on a stool from the Miami collection that yes. we were looking at in, in the catalog. Mm -hmm. When you look at that, you see the woman is sitting upright. She's mm -hmm. very proud of her um, beauty. She's very proud of herself. And she's sitting, you know, temptingly and has her shoe kicked up in the air and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Even the iguana, the squirrel, the kangaroo, for me, those are much more delightful I think than his paintings. I think I, well, I, I, mm -hmm. I think I'll tend to agree with you because yeah. there's one, the particular one, the dre, where the men yes, are going the to Dre market, card. where they, they look like they're having a they're ball. They're having a wheel of a time like and they're, they're kicking back off in the and everything, yes. and it's like all <laughs> fun and games and so on. I mean, yeah. I mean, Sandy Gully, he's, he's, I think his Jamaican thinker, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. is quite a bit more serious, yes. um, but I do see that kind of exuberance and that playfulness. I think he frees up when, when he's, he's doing, doing sculpture. Sculptures. Perhaps that came to him later. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that wasn't his first inclination, mm. but I really enjoy his sculptures. I enjoy them. I just want to thank you very much for yeah, coming in and, you know, sharing with us quite a lot <laughs> in terms of your in terms of what can be brought out in the work because i know that all of the people who've come in and seen this exhibition and will be coming to see this exhibition from this point on will be seeing a whole lot more in these works so it's been a pleasure it's been a delight all right thank you thank very you. much